we will learn v ray sunlight to replicate the scene instead of this house you can use a box and as far as the floor is concerned or the ground is concerned i will recommend you guys to use a v ray plane i just pick the texture and i will delete my road and instead of the road you guys can use a v ray plane and apply the texture here next render your scene to make sure there is no light in the scene you can see currently there is no light in the scene after this whenever i am setting my v-ray sun i always set it in the front viewport to create v-ray sunlight you go to your front viewport and create a v-ray sun there are three methods to create V-ray Sun. I like method three that is click here. Then click on the top and left click and hold your left click and take it down like this. Now release your left click and it will ask you, would you like to automatically add a V-ray sky environment map? Click yes. This will add a V-ray sky too. Now go to your perspective viewport or wherever you want to render and click on render. By default, the render will be too bright and ugly. The reason for this is that I'm rendering in perspective camera right now. If you see, it's perspective camera. Or if you're rendering in 3ds Max standard camera, the render will be too bright. To correct this, you have to select your V-Ray sunlight and you have to go to your modify panel and decrease your intensity multiplier from 1 to 0 0.025. Now, if I render right now, my render will be OK. This is the value where you will find a good result. You can decrease or increase it little bit according to your need. But if you do it using front viewport like I did, this is the best value for you. Once you have done this, most of your work is done. But before I go forward, I just want to tell you one thing. Right now, I'm using perspective camera. That's why I have to decrease this intensity multiplier to 0 0.025. But if you are using V-Ray physical camera, this camera, then you don't need to decrease your intensity multiplier. An intensity multiplier of one will be okay if you are using V-Ray camera, but if you are using perspective camera or you are using 3ds Max standard camera, then you have to decrease it to 0.025. This is very, very important. Once you have done this, then the remaining things that you have to do is that you have to select your sunlight and you have to decrease your sunlight. Let's say I'm in my front viewport and I decrease it like this all the way down to zero. Now, if I go to my camera and, and I click on my render setup, I will just lock my perspective viewport so that no other is selected. Make sure your rendering camera is selected. I'm rendering using perspective, so I will lock this one. And if you're using some other camera, you have to lock that one. Now, I will click here and I will start interactive rendering so that when I change my sunlight direction, I will see the result instantly. Now guys, if you look here, this is how it is looking right now. So if I go here in my front viewport and I start or I go to my top viewport right now and I start moving my, let's say, sunlight in direction a little bit like this okay you can see here is my sun you have to adjust your light little bit it's on the ground right now zero and i have adjusted my sun like this so the second thing that you can do is that if you want to increase your sun intense size not intensity, sun size. So you can do it like this. If I increase it from one to three, you can see your sun will be a little bit big. If you want to show sunrise, you can do it something like this, or you can do it like this. It's up to you how much you want it. And if you don't want your sun at all, you can simply click on the invisible.
So I just decrease my size to one and just make it one so that I don't want to see it. Next, I will go to my front viewport and I will increase, start increasing the height of my sun. When I start increasing the height of my sun, you will see the sky will change, the shadows will change and the light direction will change. It will automatically adjust the light. Now, if I go to my top viewport, I will just like to move it a little bit like this. I don't like the sun to directly appear into the camera. Side is something that I like it better. Now, again, in my front viewport, I will increase the height. And you will see that Vray Sun will adjust everything for you. Sky, shadows, light. Again, in my top viewport, I just want it to be a little bit like this over here. And I will increase its height again a little bit more. If I increase it a little bit more like this, and it will be like a little bit different. So this is how you adjust your sunlight. Once you have adjusted your sunlight, direction and everything, Vira will give you a very good result. Next, we will learn these two parameters, blend angle and horizon height. Sometimes we have to use them. To understand them properly, I will just select my VRA plane and I will hide my selection. Next, click here and I will start interactive rendering. Just stop your render, click here and just create a plane like this, something like this. There are times when you have to match your horizon height to according to your image. So for that purpose, we will use these two things. Click on interactive rendering. And first we will learn horizon offset. When you increase your horizon offset, this line will come start to come down. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. One, let's see, two, you can see the more I'm increasing my horizon offset, the more this line is coming down. Let's do it 2.1 or 2.2, 2.3. 2 2.2 2 .2 is good. So you understand that horizon offset increases or decreases this line. After this, blending, if it is zero, There will be no bl blend, uh, blending between your plane and your sky. But if you start to increase it, let's increase it to one. Let's increase it to two. You can see there is some blending between these two things. So that's how you use these two things. Hope you guys understand this parameter very well. After this, I will right click and unhide all. I want my plane back again. Once you have adjusted your sunlight, sun angle, and these two parameters, the next thing that you will do mostly is that you might want clouds in your sky. So click on clouds. So first just start interactive rendering. And turn on your clouds. The moment you click, click here, you have some clouds over here. After this, if you want ground shadows, you want the cloud shadow to appear on the ground. Yes, you can use it and I normally use it. I like it. You can see at far places, it is creating little bit of clouds. After this, you have to decide the density of the clouds. Right now it's 0.5. It means it's in between. If you increase it to its full value of one, your scene will be extremely cloudy. and your shadows will be soft, just like the real world. After this, uh, I don't want my scene to be that much cloudy, so I will just turn it, take it back to 0.6 like this, so that there are less clouds. Next, variety. Variety will tell you how much your cloud has variations. 
how much different kind of clouds you have. So let's increase it to 0.7. And you will see different shapes of clouds. Some scatterness in your clouds and you will see a different shape. If you keep it, take it down to let's say 0.1. You won't see too many cloud shapes. You will see big clouds, but not too much. So if you start increasing them, you will see more random cloud shapes. The next parameter that I touch is offset X and offset Y. It means that how much you want your clouds to move. You can also animate these parameters if you want the clouds to move. But right now, since we are dealing with the, you can say still, so I won't gonna do it like this, but I will change their values. Let's change it to 500 meters in X. Let's take it to 1200 meters. And in Y, I also want to change it. Let's take it to 100. You can see cloud shadow have started to appear. 200, 500. The cloud is totally above it. So I do, the scene is in right now in shadows because the cloud is totally above it and it is making shadow here. So I don't want it to be that much. I want it to be 250. I want it to go back like this, or you can say 350. So guys, if you look here right now, on 320, I'm getting the cloud shadow over here and little bit of soft shadow over here too. The next parameter that I want to touch is that it's the height one. It's up to you. If you want to decrease the height, you can decrease it from here. As far as the cloud thickness is concerned, you can change this parameter to control the cloud thickness. But there is one more parameter. It's very difficult to pronounce. Uh, it's serious amount, something like this, but you can use it for your, it will also give you a very good result. I will just show you in a minute. Let's just decrease the variety of the clouds to again 0.3 so that we don't have too many clouds and just take it back, both of them to just like this. Okay guys, now look what this parameter does. If I increase it to let's say one, you will see these kinds of clouds the small ones. If I decrease it to, let's say 0.7, it will, they will be a little bit less. So if you want these kinds of small clouds like this on the height, uh, they are called cirrus amount, something like that. So you can cirrus clouds like this, so you can have it like this, or you, you can use these clouds too. So, I don't want these kind of things, so I will just take it back to point two. So this is how you control your clouds. So I hope guys you have easily understood this example. So Vira Sun is extremely powerful. If you want to create day, you can use Vira Sun.